So if you're looking to wire in your FuelTech ECU, or any ECU for that matter, or you're just interested in automotive electronics, stay tuned as we're gonna run through everything that's needed to know to wire up the FuelTech FT600 ECU into this Mazda. Previously on Project Redline. Thanks for joining us. If you're new to this series, uh, it is a whole series of uh, building up this Mazda here, Project Redline. Go back and check some of the previous episodes on, on what we've done. We've been racing this car, we've been building it, everything. It's come to this point now where we're moving to the next level. So um, stay with us after this video is done, go and check out some of those. But for now, let's dive into this episode, which is based around the FuelTech FT600 install. Now, Installing an ECU can be a pretty daunting task for someone if you're a novice or even if you are an expert in the field because especially e ECUs like the top of the line ones like FuelTech, there is lots and lots of wires and lots of sensors to, um, to sort out. So uh, what we're going to do here is try and break that down as much as we possibly can, give you as much detail as you can. So if you're having any doubts about if it's right for you, uh, this episode hopefully will clear up all that and, and give you some good pointers on what you need to do and how the process should follow so you can get the best result and, and do it yourself. Or maybe you choose, that's right, it's not for me, I'm gonna choose someone else to do it. But enough talking, let's go get started and uh, have a look at what we're gonna do. First step is to unpack our big box. We're only interested in the FT600 loom for now so we'll set aside these other boxes for later. One of the best features of the FuelTech ECU is the ability to pre-configure the inputs and outputs on a computer. Then the software automatically generates a wiring diagram which can be printed out and is custom to your application, making wiring a breeze. With that done, it's time to tackle the loom. Carefully cutting away the heat shrink gives us access to the main loom. Some unnecessary wires will be removed and saved for later. To work out loom length, we need to also work out where our ECU and components will sit in the car. So let's take a look at the dash now and see what goes where. Okie dokie, so dash out of the car and now one of the more difficult parts of this whole setup is working out where to put each one of these things. So. Uh, Obviously got some pre-existing holes there. We can patch those up uh, pretty easily. So just got to space out now exactly where we want everything and then um, work all the bits in that we need to work in. So most it's lining up pretty good uh, where I want it. So should be all good. Time to mark some stuff off, drill some extra holes, put a few more rivet nuts in there and get this back in the car. Once we get that in there, we can start planning some of the, the loom routes and things like that. All right, so I've just put a dash in here a bit of a test fit so I can see visibility to the dashboard and obviously the lights that are up here. Now it's going to be pretty hard to see that but from my point of view the top of the dash is just sort of missing here so what I'm going to do is easily just mark here with the pen what I want to do. So now with the marks here I, I know uh, drop it down I can pull the dash out drop this uh, template down and over a bit, test it again and I know it'll be in exactly the right place. This is the one for the wideband so I can move that easily a bit over to the right as well. So it might not be unbelievably graceful but this, well, it works. Alright, so there we have it. Template cut out. So what we can do now is clean this up a bit and see how she fits. First step, I might employ my old mate semi-round bastard. Yes, there's the name of this file. It's called a semi-round bastard file. Look it up if you don't know. So that should just about do us for now. FT Spark, CDI unit, EGT, 
Uh, peak hold box one and two. FT600 fuel tech and wide band. Next part, uh, get back to the wiring pretty much. So put this aside now. Um, I'm just out of gas at the moment for the welder, so I can't uh, finish the rest of this. Weld up these little bits, but for now, while we can, I'll uh, get back to wiring. So stage one of the wiring is to recover these plugs. So these are the Deutsch plugs that we used already and these are all completely reusable. So you can see in there there's little tabs. So what we just want to do is push them back. When we push them back, we'll be able to pull out the, the corresponding wire. So push that tab back and can pull that pin out. So just carry that out now for the remainder of this plug. What I'll do now is there's another tool that actually enters to get all the wires out of here. It's another tool that enters in the back of here. I have a couple of plastic ones but after you use them a fair few times I find the plastic ones really start to degrade a bit so I've got a steel one that's coming and we'll get onto that sometime tomorrow and that will be able to pop these out very easily. So I've already popped a few of them out. But the plastic one just starts to degrade after a while and it gets a little sham from the end and just doesn't do the job like it should. So resume this tomorrow. So while we're waiting for those other pins to arrive, we can start work on some of the other looms. So this is the one for the peak hold injectors. So I'll be making sort of a breakout harness out of this. So I'll just snip this about here. So what we're going to do here is create a breakout harness so every time we plug something in um, and we need to unplug it or check it or whatever, we don't have to fight the whole loom and, and pull out bits and pieces so everything is sectional. So it's very easy to, all, to, to put together and, and then take it out of the car if, if need be. So uh, we don't plan on taking anything out of the car, but you know stuff happens and sometimes you do have to pull stuff out of the car and check it and go through or whatever. So you know more and more sections that all this loom is split up into, the easier it is to get out. So we can now start terminating that and we'll turn it into a, what's called a breakout harness. Got male and female, and then the male and female plugs. It's a couple of different sizes, so different size wires. So this stuff's pretty thin gauge, so we can use these smaller ones. Uh, and these are 18 or 20s, they're 16. Got some 12 ones for um, some of the big big boys, like the fuel pumps and and carrying power to core packs and things like that. So you see the number there, it says one, which means it's it's an open circuit. If I close the circuit, it becomes zero. So what I, what I want to do here is put one in on that pin and then I put the other end bingo so that is as far as I can see channel 4 so what I'll do now is I'll grab this and you'll see the back of the Deutsch connector here there you go you can see that there's numbers all there so what I'll do now is I'll grab our mate number 4 and I will whack him in number 4 all right, we're good to go. So as we were, we're gonna pick up here, my awesome, more than likely made in China tools have arrived and there they are. So what'll happen now is this gets pushed into back here and then we pull, able to pull all the pins out. So we need to pull all of these out and essentially start again. That's the job done. One, two, recovered. A whole heap of wires. I'll just leave those there for now. We'll probably use a fair bit of that stuff because here's the, uh, the injector wires. So we'll salvage those and uh, we'll make it a part of our patch harness now. So we'll be rewiring some of this stuff too because, I mean, these are meant to be totally independent from each other, but as you can see, some of the wires are plugged into number two to a firewall terminal, also plugged into sharing some components in number one, so it's just bloody stupid. So I'll have to get those sorted. And then um, I've got a third one because obviously the fuel tech's got 
a lot more uh, inputs and outputs, uh, so need somewhere else to put it. So I'm thinking I might run anything connected to the engine, so all the injectors, um, air temp, water temp, all that kind of stuff. I might put another plug here and just feed it out there, just so it's a little bit, um, a little bit more hidden out of the way. Um, or it might come through even just up there, so they're all, all the wires run together. So see how we go, but that's one of the next steps as well. It looks really messy at the moment, the back of this, because I've unclipped all the cable ties and everything. I've run some different wires and some different rounding positions uh, to get ready for it all. So you can see here our um, FuelTech A harness, and here's one of the breakout ones to go to our ignition box. I've just run some of those there. This will then go also for the power feeds for that. Here's some of the other breakouts and um, they are uh, sleeving here. This is from um, company, another great Australian company called uh, DCI Performance. So they make a lot of stuff um, such as header wrap and so all this type of stuff. So they make all all this kind of product and um, it works. Uh, it works brilliantly. Everything I need a relay for, I've, I've listed here. And then I've listed all the relays uh, that sit up the top, so up the top here, and then a second row of relays here, which you can see. Right, remember the, the box that I made, so but you can see here it is, and what I need each relay to control. This big long wire here uh, is a separate earth that goes back to, I think it's direct to battery so the other one goes to chassis and the other one goes to battery and the reason you do that is whatever you're using in that um, that relies on that clean earth signal um, it can skew that number just slightly so by them having the earth in two places um, the technology is smart enough to then understand the difference between those two earths and then apply a correction factor based on that so um, that's great so we'll why those in exactly how the wiring diagram says to is nothing worse than people who wire things how they want to or how they think they want to wire them, um, not reading the wire diagram, then having a problem with something and blaming it on the technology. So if you're used to using one tech which wires something one way, you get something else that says to wire it a different way, don't wire it the way you know how to because you think you're right wire it exactly how the wiring diagram that comes with the product says to because they've done the research it's their product and they do know best so i'm just ticking off some of the other boxes here so we have um trans so we've got an engine fan uh i have the few i have the the fuse is set up for that and the relay set up for that, but I'm not actually going to run that through the fuel tech now. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to run, uh, it's another change, another upgrade to this setup. Um, something that I actually used to have on, on my FD, um, just sitting behind me here. Uh, it's running a Davies Craig uh, electric water pump. And the reason for that is I, I was noticing, I like to turn around the car pretty quickly. I mean, there's, I, I don't really check. The, the spark plugs, um, you know, the, there's a minor check of, the, of oil and maybe you have to dump the catch can, a little check of the fuel pressure, uh, I mean the um, tire pressure. But I was finding that, yeah, I was, I was running like fans trying to get the heat soak out of the engine. Uh, and I was still finding that if I was leaving the car in for 45 minutes, go back in, start the car, uh, water temps were still up around 70 degrees. So by the time I'd I drive around because I don't tow the car obviously to, to, to the start line um, and normally like Luke or Geordie and that are filming so I don't have anyone sort of to push the car and that generally um, sometimes uh, mate Darren and, and his crew have, have given me a hand when he's Gemini isn't um, isn't at the track or if it's raining that they, they, they help out which is great but if I'm driving the car to the start line generally top by the time I get the start line uh, Sometimes the temps already crept up into the 80s and then do a burnout and then and sometimes the 80, uh, mid 80, 85s or whatever. So I, I prefer the car to be a little bit cooler and, and suffer less from heat. So because that heat then gets absorbed into intercooler piping and in, in, intake manifold, then it's at, you know, it obviously affects intake manifold temp and stuff like that too. So I'd like to cool the car down easier up in between rounds and 
what I think I'll do is I'll run a Davies Craig electric water pump and the Davies Craig controller because it means then I can just leave all the electronics in the car off and then just have the Davies Craig controller on because what the controller can actually do is pulse the water pump um, and the and the um, thermo fan independent from everything else and I can set it to basically run until 10 degrees below the turn on temp so if, I, if I've got like the turn on temp say it's set to 70 it will run that water pump until say 60 degrees and then turn off uh, which which will help really really help to take a lot of the heat out of the car uh, out of the engine because a, a lot of it like, like that water that's trapped because uh, I'm still running the, the standard um, mechanical water pump and, and thermostat in this thing so a lot of a lot of the temp when it drops away the thermostat that, that hot water is trapped inside the block um, and then you know as soon as we start it gets up the temp it all rushes through and then the radio has got very little time to actually cool because we're doing our run so we'll sort that out in a later episode how we're going to fit that a new one that we sort of touched on blow off valve um, position so the turbo smart new blow off valve that we're, we're organizing has a, a position in, in like a position sensor so you'll be able to know when it's open so I guess the good thing behind that is um, when I was initially setting up uh, project redline we had a spring which my god I can hear the cocky crowing overhead shut up you stupid bird the data that turbo smart supply essentially says um, if at idle the engine is drawing this much vacuum use this spring and uh, we were and what I noticed, um, and I didn't notice it at first, is that on really light throttle, you crack the throttle, the blow off valve would open. Yeah, and it was just causing some issues, obviously, with, with the tuning a little bit at first, too. So we got an even he heavier sort of spring and put it in, and never had a problem ever since. However, if we'd had a uh, blow off, this blow off valve with a position sensor in it, you straight away would have seen that that sensor uh, would have shown movement, um, and, and you would have been able to pick it up straight away. There would have been no lost time. I'm wondering, oh, what's the issue? What's going on? All right, so with that all, all sorted now, uh, we can get on to the next part of planning, which uh, essentially starts off like this. So it's a giant list of working out how many pins are available and all the, all the connectors we've got. So we've got three of these style connectors. Uh, two of the same ones different. So just worked out how many pins we need. Here you see we've got 43 of the smaller ones and 16 of the larger ones to hold more current. So um, all I've basically done here is, is written a list of all the types of sensors uh, we have and how many pins they will all take up. So it had air temperature, fuel pressure, injectors, TPS, back pressure, trans pressure, brake pressure, trans temp, oil pressure, engine temp, oil temp. Uh, blow off valve position, turbo temp, wastegate position, wastegate pressure, the coils, um, and I come out to a number of, of 59, which is how many pins are here. Um, so with that, I then take that information and write a list. We've got plug one, plug two, and plug three, which are the big, big fireball connectors. And I've written how many pins are in each one of those, how many small pins, how many large pins, and then I've just designated where everything will sit based on on the size of the pin, whether it be a small or a large pin, and then uh, fed all the information that I got from here into this list. And what this does now is it means I've got an accurate list of what goes where, so I can easily now go, okay, this one goes here, this one goes there, tick everything off, no I'm not missing a sensor, and also make sure that the job is done correctly. Yes, this is plug one with some of the wires, and uh, some of the wiring needs uh, little repairs here. This is plug two, and this is plug three, so it's going to be very easy now to plug everything I need to into that plug, tick it off as I go, that plug, tick it off as I go, that plug, tick it off as I go, and then I know if I, if I need to get any more if I need sensors or anything like that, I can go purchase them or I can wire them from scratch. But uh, at least now there's, you know, there's a, there's a game plan essentially on what needs to be done and in what order. So it, it's going to make it a, a hell of a lot easier and a hell of a lot quicker to, to wire the rest of this up. So um, it was looking like a really big exercise because it's really daunting to wire up a car from scratch. So you can see here the total of 59 for those three plugs. Now that's, you know, 
well, it, the total number of wires actually have to terminate well over double that because we've got others in the cabin as well that aren't running through those um, firewall terminals. So I've got well and truly in excess of 120 wires to terminate. So um, that's a lot of wires to cut, terminate, run and everything like that and, and work out. But when you work in a plan like this, uh, it'll make it a hell of a lot easier. So less talking, more action. Uh, let's get started. I took up the core wires, but they don't have any labels on them. So pretty important to make sure I get trailing and leading correct, correct way around. So I've got my label maker. What the? It's a label maker. Mm -hmm. Essentially what I'll just do with this is print labels, stick the labels on this black heat shrink here. And then I've got some clear heat shrink tube, which is this, and I'll uh, heat shrink that over it. So. Um, you can spend thousands of dollars buying a label printer that prints directly onto heat shrink. Um, I don't wire enough cars at probably at that level of motorsport where that is what customers are paying huge dollars for. So this works. It actually works really well. So I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the results. Like this stuff currently has been soaked in fuel and oil and, and whatnot, and and it's stood up to it no problem. So no reasons to always be having you know, the biggest baller set up known to man. Um, believe it or not, sometimes the simple things work quite easily. So print those off. Here they come. Son of a bitch. Of course, out of paper. Always the way. So with the new ECU, something else I'll have to wire in are two more momentary buttons. You see with the trans brake one here, which when I push it engage the trans brake, I release it, releases the trans brake. Um, what we want to do is be able to bump the car into stage. So come into the first stage lights, um, press the trans brake button, and then we want to have another button somewhere either on the steering wheel or over here on the shifter that momentarily disengages the trans brake. Uh, and allows the car to bump into the second stage, so it's much easier to build boost and race competitively. So um, I'm probably going to put it here because more than likely I'm going to put the scramble boost button also on the steering wheel here. So um, I might unscrew this and see how possible it is to modify this this ball shifter because I looked at this shifter and they're about. They're about $130 to buy one with a with a button already on top of it. So uh, if I can make one without having to spend another $130, then that's a win because this whole shift is only something like $250 or something like that. So buying one of these for $130 on its own seems a bit excessive. And I've got a few momentary buttons left over, so I might see if we can do that now. Right, so this is what wiring progress looks like. That's uh, one part of engine bay loom. It's another part of the engine bay loom. This is one of the fuel tech harnesses. This is harness A. This is harness B. EGT, wideband, wheel speed, and the FT spark. So, as you can see, that is a lot of wires and a lot of connectors. Uh, you can see why, at first, it can be pretty daunting to work out what to do and where to start. But um, a good plan is always the best place to start, and then just getting started somewhere. Um, you just gotta you just gotta dive in and start working on it. So this is the uh, coolant temp sensor. Here it is. Uh, this is, uh, it's called pull to seat connector. So you've got to put the wires through first, then um, terminate them, then pull the seat back and it clips in. So um, a big fuck you to whoever designed these. I hate pull to seat connectors. So um, I'm not in a big, big hurry for this, but uh, I could only sort of access the pull to the pull to seat ones at the moment, not the push to seat. So, um, 
play with what we've got. We've also got a little label as per before. So we'll just whack that up there. Get some clear. There we go. We have engine coolant temp. Now, if you're just using um, something like this that I'm using, a Dymo labor printer, label printer to print out labels like this, just be aware when you're using also a heat gun to um, shrink the clear shrink tube over the top of it, that uh, the way that, that label there, like you can see the L1, the, the way that's made is by using heat uh, so if you do put too much heat over the yellow, you'll find what happens is it just goes black. So um, make sure that you very uh, use a sparse amount of heat over that and just put it around everywhere else and it'll shrink in anyway, so it'll be fine. Here's how I fit the sleeving. So you can see obviously this one end here. I've got to move it all the way up here. Now. The actual cables are hidden about here, and the end of this is is all the way down here. So this stuff's actually, you know, now you're in now you're in a position where you can't grip the end of the cable to pull it through. So what do you do? So so the method I use, and because this can easily bunch up on itself, is this. So I I hold uh, this is the one end that you want. So this is the end with the you know the the plug. I'll hold it uh, about here. I'll grip it somewhere a bit further on down here where the wires are actually internally and I'll I'll bunch it a bit and bunching it then allows it to go down so again it's just bunching bunching it up and letting it go down bunching it up and letting it go down and you're just essentially repeating this the entire way down until the wires will eventually pop out the end like that. So when they pop out the end, again, you can still see it bunching. And you're gonna pull it all the way down. And it'll pull all the way to where you want it to be. So that's pretty much the easiest way to, to do that. All right, got some more parts now. Uh, setting up the uh, set for a new show we're gonna film. Uh, you'll probably actually see this show before you'll see this video, but anyway, uh, a couple of our uh, my new little beauties. Don't tell the wife. Uh, here we go, got some more parts. So I uh, got the oxygen sensors, genuine Bosch. Um, there's no use risking your race engine, especially when you're using um, air fuel ratio, you know, um, short term fuel trims on non genuine sensors. So Here's the Bosch one, it's got some wires in there of all different kinds of colours which will help. And also uh, just swung past uh, Bunnings and picked up a couple of these recip saw blades because um, quite honestly, these blades from Lennox are the bomb. So one of the things I want to do now is start on the five volt and ground for the sensor. So you'll see here that there's one wire out of the fuel tech for five volt uh, output sensors and one wire for the ground for the sensors. So what we need to do, um, seeing as there is all of these, is, you know, there's an earth, um, you know, here, 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 um, there, 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 you know, there's multiple, multiple earths here coming out of uh, the engine base side of this wiring loom and then they'll come out the back of these plugs which is this is the cabin side so what we want to do is run all of those earths off to a single probably distribution block and then run that one lead off of that back to this ECU so um, we'll work out how many earth pins we need and then we'll get started on that and then we'll do the same thing for the 5 volt sensors. So after all that, all those wires uh, and this is the little compact sort of 
nest of wires we end up with. So you can see they're all labeled here. Another one and another one. So all I need now is to um, cut all these off, terminate it with some, um, so they'll go into a single uh, ring terminal. And then I can plug these into our uh, firewall feed through plugs here. So that's just a, a much cleaner, neater way of doing it. You can see it's all, you know, it's nice. It, it actually looks very presentable. It's nice and neat. It's not going to get caught or anything when it goes in the car. And it's very easy to follow. So I know 5 volt sensor, that's exactly what it do does. All the wires are also the same color. So there's no confusion there. That just makes it all easy. So. We'll uh, call it a night because it's getting late, uh, but we'll get back into that as soon as we can and finish off the rest of it. Not much to go now. Exciting times. Engine bay side of the harness, pretty much done. Here is the harness that'll go inside the car. So most of that's also done as well. So we can test fit this in here now uh, and just see where uh, those obviously have the two holes already in there. This one needs another hole. So I'm going to take a little ripper here and make another hole in there somewhere. So I'm just going to lay this wiring loom in just to understand exactly where that hole's going to go now. Boom. I win, you lose. Okay, so end result is we have one, two, and now three firewall plugs. So uh, the idea behind that is all the easy accessories to remove or accessories off the engine will be done by these two. And the things that actually plug into the engine, so injectors, um, TPS, something like that, uh, will all be on the engine. So when we do, if we do <laughs> um, need to take the engine out easily, we just disconnect that firewall plug and bang, in it all goes. We don't have to undo all the individual plugs and things like that. So. Uh, just makes job easier um, so yeah it's pretty much it we're now I mean it, it looks like there's a little bit of it looks like there's a little bit of wiring still to go on that but it's not really um, a lot there's a lot of these wires are for sensors that are actually inside inside here so um, trans brake dash button scramble boost things like that so um, and they were cranking the sensor wire on the ground um, and positive 5 volts for the sensors and then uh, most of these are already terminated they're just um, uh, output triggers so uh, just got to connect those up to this terminal here which we haven't done yet so it's pretty much all done and yeah case now is just make sure everything fits and then we can take it out again and put the wire wrap at all the stuff and finally sort it all out and finish it so um, progressing pretty well and yeah, here's the uh, FT spark loom. So again, this might look like a lot of wires in it here, but it actually isn't. It's just a big, big, long run of, of um, three-way twisted power feed and earths and things like that. So it's actually only two wires need to be connected up, really. It's just power, uh, main core power, and then an earth, and, and that's it. So, well, it looks like a lot of wiring. Um, it just needs to be cut the size and, and run in, which is why I'm leaving it to here, because... Um, Although I have left obviously a good amount of wire um, to put stuff where I want to, um, you can see that FT spark plug, this one sits up here and you can see just how long the harness is that comes with it. So obviously you don't need that, but um, I just, it's very easy to sort it out once it's in the car. So I just thought I'll pull in the car, cut a couple of wires, rip them off, put them where they need to be and that'll be that. might turn the attention to the secondary project now which will be mounting the wires for what package you saw us get the other day which is our uh, David Cra Davies Craig electric water pump so essentially I need to take this electric water pump and I need to figure out how to mount it so um, at the moment you can see I've just got that hard pipe there so um, it's got to go into the radiator down there and it'll come out of here and I'm just going to work out so you can see there it says oh, see it says out so it's got to go in 
like that somehow. Okay, so with all this done, it's time to dummy test fit in the car to see if everything works right. Now, yes, I do check all of this stuff on the bench with a multimeter and make sure uh, continuity is fine and everything's right, which I have done and everything seems fine. But the last uh, test I do before I put the harness in its place for good is, is just a dummy test fit. So nothing's cable tied in place. Everything's just loosely put in there. It's not bolted in. And you can see here now we've got our dash with all the uh, boxes we need, as well as our fuse and relay panel. Uh, so, moment of truth, let's jump in the car and uh, hit the switch and hopefully we get some uh, nice glowing lights on the dash and our O2 uh, meter over there and we know we're on the right path. Alright, so here we are, welcome to the office. Um, everything is now in place, it's all wired up. This is the moment of truth. Uh, will everything work or will we let all the smoke out of the wires? Uh, hopefully not the latter, but uh, here goes nothing. Alright. Lights, always a good sign. TPS not calibrated, well, there's nothing in the engine bay, so let's run with no. So this is just the basic startup screen. We will run through a full configuration on how to configure the uh, FuelTech ECU and how to you know, put in a basic tune map for this vehicle uh, later on. But for now, all we wanted to do was give it power and make sure that uh, it's actually working. And you can see here, this is a basic screen that, that normally comes. You can configure this screen to display anything you want. This is um, RPM, manifold pressure, fuel pressure, oil pressure, battery TPS. So there's a whole heap of things that are already on this uh, dash screen from factory, but we want to configure it to what we want it to be. So we'll run through that as a separate episode later on in the future. O2 meter over here is all working fine as well. Um, there's no clicking or tapping or anything of buzzing noises coming from any of our relays over here which means they're all working great um, haven't wired up any of the any of the steering buttons here yet for uh, for our uh, bump or trans brake or anything like that so we'll we'll organize those uh, later on but there's not much to be done there but yeah overall um, good result we're 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 flying here so very happy with that um, you can see here we've got our FT Spark CDI unit, EGT uh, CAN module, and as well as our peak and hold injector box here too. Uh, they're not wired up as of yet because uh, some of the wiring is in place, but they don't need to be wired. Uh, I've tested those harnesses and I'm fine with that. And also, how can I test it? There's no engine in the car yet, so how am I really going to test any of this stuff? So it was mainly to make sure that all the wiring on this was fine, which it is, which is great. So next part we're going to move to, just in case you're unfamiliar with the, uh, the series, is we've gone to a semi-PP engine. Uh, that engine now uses a different intake, a lower intake, upper intake manifold supplied by South Coast Rotary. With that means we now need to make a different intercooler pipe and a few other things too. So we've got some fabrication to do before we uh, can put the engine back in and turn key on this thing. So in the next episode of Project Redline, we'll be attacking all that fabrication and uh, we'll see you then. Till next time, catch you later. And like always, support the people who support us.